So in this little webinar, I want to talk about managing Windows Server 2012 and principally managing it from older operating systems, from Windows 7, from Vista XP, and maybe even other devices and operating systems. Uh, because really there's been a big shift in Windows Server 2012. Really the, the default for Windows Server 2012 is we want to run in server core mode. Now if we're running in a normal server with a GUI, where we have a graphical interface, you can see this is a Windows Server 2012 with the graphical interface and the management tools installed. So I can manage it locally. I can manage remote servers. But if I actually go with the best practices, the defaults, I will actually end up with server core. Well, I don't have a server manager. I don't have MMC. I can't manage it graphically locally anymore. I have to manage it remotely. Now certainly I could manage it from a server but what's actually out there is the remote server administration tools, which enables me from a Windows 8 box. You can see I've got it here. I can download these remote server administration tools for Windows 8, and it allows me to manage Windows Server 2012 from a Windows 8 client. So if I look at my start screen, you notice I've got Server Manager. I could have Active Directory Administrative Center. I have other things available to me. So now from a Windows 8 client, I can remotely manage all of my Windows 2012 servers. And my Windows 2008, my Windows 2008 R2, providing those boxes, have actually got the Windows Management Framework 3.0 installed. So from this one Windows 8 server manager that's part of RSAT, I can manage Windows Server 2012, 2008 R2, and 2008 all remotely. You can see I've got 2008 R2 box here, and then the rest of them are all 2012s. But what's happening is, well, people are like, well, I've not rolled out Windows 8 yet. I'm not ready for Windows 8. Can I run these on Windows 7? And you can't. The RSAT for Windows 2012 only runs on Windows 8. In the same way the RSAT for Windows 2008 R2 only ran on Windows 7. The RSAT for Windows 2008 was only available for Vista. And then if you look at 2003, it was available for Windows XP. So it's always the, sort of the client equivalent version is what the RSAT is available for. But we do have this scenario where you have clients that maybe don't even want to roll out Windows 8 even for the IT teams yet. And so what do you do? So one option is you stand up a Windows 2012 remote desktop session host and administrators just connect in and get a full desktop. Then they could install all the remote server administration tools they need. Because this is a 2012 box. Even if I have hardly any roles or features installed on this, from this server I can go in and add all of the administration tools for all of the other features. So I could make every administration tool for all the different components available on this one server. And obviously if I'm using this for more than two admins, then I would need to install the remote desktop session host. I would have to have RDS cows, but I might only have five, 10, 20 administrators. It's not a huge overhead. But that's fairly inconvenient. I don't wanna have to remote into a separate desktop. So one of the great things we have in 2012 is this easy ability to quickly stand up application publishing. Actually, so I'm gonna use Remote Desktop Services installation. I'm gonna do a quick start. So it's gonna install a web portal, connection broker, and the session host on this single box. I wanna do a session-based deployment. Do it to this local box. It's gonna do a few quick checks. And I can hit deploy. So I'm gonna say restart automatically. And so with app publishing, what happens is from the end client, well, they don't see a complete de desktop. They just see that particular application. So actually let this finish, then we'll come back to it. So the reboot happened, the setup finished, and only gives me a website. So at this point right now, I can actually go to my Windows 7 box and type in that URL. Type it in, get the certificate error because it used self signed by default, but that's easily fixed. And there, by default, it published three applications uh, calculator, paint, and wordpad. So if I fire up paint, what's actually happening behind the scenes is that's triggering and running on the remote machine. So although it looks like it's fully integrated with my local desktop, this is actually running 
So I've got task manager as part of MSTSC. So this paint is actually running remotely. So paint's uh, not really the goal of what we want to do here, but I can easily add other applications to that. So if I jump over to that box and go to remote desktop services, so just connecting in, there we go. It created a default sort of quick start collection. And within there, they're the programs it published by default, but I can just do publish additional program. And just quickly for this example, I'll just add server manager, publish. So now what will happen is I now have server manager available as a published application. So if I jump back to that Windows 7 box and refresh, now there's server manager. So that's a lot more useful. So now in my Windows 7 box, I have server manager. I can manage a local server, I could add additional servers. I'm now running server manager, integrated with my local desktop, not some separate environment, but it's actually running remotely. Now at this point, I'm actually gonna switch over to a different remote desktop session host. I showed you that one just as how to get the thing installed. But I actually have a different server, which is part of my main environment, because we can do something else. So this is exactly the same, but on this box, I've published a few other things. So I wanna jump to, this is my main server. You notice I have server manager again. I left paint there, but I also have all the system center management tools. So I could, as the user or the administrator, click each one of these, go to the website every single time. But that's really a lot of work. One of the fantastic things you can actually do in Windows 7, if I go to my control panel, we actually have remote app and desktop connections. And what you'll see is currently it's not got any configured. But what you can do very, very easily is actually Give it effectively that same website I go to. So it's name your server slash RD web slash feed slash web feed dot ASPX. And what it's actually doing now is it's subscribing to say, well, what are all the applications or desktops being published? So you know it found seven. If I now, I don't have to go to this web portal. If I just click my start menu, all programs, remote app and desktop connections, they're now just published to my start screen. And as new ones are published to the website, they will appear on my start screen. So now I can just launch server manager straight from my start menu. So that's now starting it on that RDS server, my main server. It's logging in for the first time, so it's a bit slower, but now. And on this one, I've got more things configured. So I actually have a much more servers configured. I can manage my RDS, my Active Directory, everything. So from Windows 7, I'm running full server manager. I can run Active Directory Administrative Center. I can publish any of those tools I want. I can publish the system center management tools as well. I can publish anything. And it's just totally integrated with my local desktop. So really no one needs to know any difference. So if you want to administer Windows 2012 from a Windows 7 box, well, you can do that. Set up an RDS server, set up a licensing server, buy the RDS cows, and then publish the applications. Now you can take this <laughs> further. So this actually can work for Windows 8 as well. So obviously Windows 8, you have the remote server administration tools available, but you can do that same publishing to Windows 8. So I've already got that configured. So if I go to my start menu, you'll see I have those same published applications just available to me. And the really great thing in Windows 8 is if you use the remote desktop Metro application, you don't even have to type in the feed name. If you just go to the settings and do access, you can just type in your email address. So john at saveltech.net, that's all you have to do. It will find the feed for you. So I've already got this set up, this is why it's erroring, but that's all you would do for the first time. Now all that's doing behind the scenes is it's a DNS entry. That's it, there's nothing special. So to use that email, all you have to do is in DNS, let me just fire up my DNS tool. 
in the zone, you create an MS RADC text record, so it's in the root, so savvletech.net underscore MS RADC, and you type in that feed URL. You don't type in web feed ASPX at the end, it's just the name slash RD web slash feed, that's it. So when you type in your email address, what's really happening behind the scenes is it's just doing an NS lookup in DNS for this, this record, underscore MSRDAC of your domain name. And that's it. But now I am publishing these, you can go even further back. So Windows XP. Now I'm not saying I wanna manage from XP, but there's absolutely nothing stopping me. Now I can't do published applications in XP. It doesn't support that. But I can absolutely go to the website, server manager, and I'm now running Windows 2012 server manager, what looks like on an XP box. And I have exactly the same capability, the same performance. See my dashboards, hide that, zoom out, same capabilities. Now, if you didn't want to have to access the website for XP, what's actually happening, these are all just RDP files. So if I actually go back to my Windows 7 or even my Windows 8 box, if I go and look in my profile, what's actually happening behind the scenes in your app data, this is hidden, roaming, Microsoft, there'll be a workspaces, it creates an RDP file for each of those apps. So I could always just subscribe on like my Windows 7 or one desktop and then cut and paste these RDP files and put them anywhere I want. So I could then make it available to other things. So it's actually very, very easy to make this easily available. Now, oh, there is one uh, additional level you can go to. So in this case, I've got an iPod and there are RDP clients for iPods. There are RDP clients for Android. So it's always funny. So people say, hey, I have iPads, uh, iOS devices, Androids. So I can't use Microsoft's remote desktop services. I have to use a third party like Citrix or something else. That's not the case. You can get RDP clients for these platforms. So if I just launch into this, what you can actually see, let me just zoom this out a little bit there we go so this application this can do that same web feed in its extensions i can actually configure an rd web which is what i've done so it's actually using that same feed that i could use for my windows 7 boxes so from this ios device i can run server manager So obviously I've gone from Windows 8, Windows 2012, Windows 7, Windows XP, and just keep going lower. Uh, now we're at an, an iOS device, kidding aside. But I, I can access it for anything. The beauty of these published applications is how easy and how accessible this really makes what you're doing. So I can click all servers, see what machines I have, perform the configurations. Now, the goal of this is not that, hey, um, don't run Windows 8. The ideal performance is to be able to run Windows 8. Run Windows 8, run the RSAT, run all the management applications locally so you don't have to have those back-end servers. But ultimately, if you're not ready for Windows 8 yet, if you can't just run them locally like I have on this box, if that's just really not an option, then stand up a 2012 box. This is my 2012 box. This is my proper RDS server. You stand up a licensing box, you stand up that connection broker, a session host, you saw how easy it is. You install the management applications using the add and then other features, remote server administration tools, and you just publish them. And then everyone can just access it, it's very, very easy. So the fact you can't roll out Windows 8 does not stop you in your management Windows Server 2012. I hope that was useful, thank you.